Okay, it's uh, three o'clock uh, Eastern time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and get started. Again, thanks for uh, attending. Uh, this session is on Azure Data Studio notebooks. Uh, it's gonna be the basics. There's a lot there, but we wanna, you have to have some place to start. And so uh, uh, we're gonna methodically walk through how you use um, notebooks. If you have a question along the way, feel free to type it into the uh, chat uh, window. Um, and we'll certainly make time by the end of the uh, presentation to uh, address those questions. Uh, so in order to use Azure Data Studio notebooks, you have to install Azure Data Studio. It, it is a free uh, download from Microsoft. Um, and unlike what the name sounds, Azure Data Studio, it's not just for Azure. It works uh, very well on any uh, on-premise uh, database uh, that you have. Uh, very much like uh, SQL Server Management Studio, which probably uh, most people who are attending have, uh, uh, have used this uh, um, interface. So the, the difference with Azure Data Studio, you still get these editing windows, but you have the concept of notebooks and notebooks are uh, a much more um, functional way to create your queries, comment your queries and store the results in a single uh, JSON file. So there's a a great deal of power uh, built into it. Uh, today, we're gonna look at three different kernels. There are more than three kernels, but uh, uh, this is a good starting point. So when you open up a notebook, you essentially say, this is going to be a SQL notebook or it's going to be a PowerShell, Python, et cetera. That's your kernel. And then all of your code that you put in would be specific to that kernel. So we have three examples here, three different notebooks that will uh, we'll run through. There are two primary cell types, <clears throat> and you're actually looking at, at one right now. This is called the, the text cell, which holds markdown. Now the markdown here has images, it's got headings, uh, et cetera. Uh, so that's <clears throat> one of the fundamental cell types. They're very rich, very powerful. Uh, then you also have code cells, which is what you're primarily used to in SQL Server, uh, management studio where you have your, uh, your, your queries. So those would be your code cells, but of course a little bit different flavor because you can have multiple code cells within a notebook. Um, and you actually, when you run <clears throat> the query, it takes the result and it stores it in the notebook. Of course, first it'll present it in the notebook, but when you save it, it saves it with the last results. So if it's a long running query, that's a great benefit. You can just open up a prior notebook and it would have the prior result, if only just for reference before you rerun um, your query. So we'll talk about the, uh, uh, and also with the code cells, it's not just the results, but you can provide some analytics, charts, et cetera, uh, on the uh, results of the code cell, which is also, uh, and then you can share it, collaborate with others, et cetera. So very powerful. Um, the, the benefits, of course, to using notebooks compared to a standard SQL query window uh, are the rich comments, links, images, et cetera. Um, the uh, notebook files uh, can be combined with a couple of other types of files, which would weave it into a book. So if you look on the left side of my screen, you can see I got six notebooks but the notebooks are presented in a way that uh, stitches it together as what some people would call a Jupyter notebook. It's a little bit loose on the terminology, depending on who you're listening to. Uh, but bottom line is you can take notebooks and stitch them together, add readme files, and add YAML files for the directory. It's optional. You don't need that. You can just open up a notebook, uh, but it does provide a, a, a rich, feature of presenting your notebooks in a more powerful way. Uh, these are just pure JSON files. A notebook is a JSON file. So any JSON editor, you could actually edit a notebook. It may not be the most pleasant experience, but it, it certainly is possible. Um, or you could use any program that produces JSON to automatically create from scratch a notebook. 
and that gives you all kinds of, of, of new possibilities as well. So uh, a lot, a lot is, is built into the notebook uh, constructs. Uh, this notebook solution, as I pointed out, you've got these six different notebooks. Um, we have a welcome uh, readme file that also lists the same one. So it gives you a little bit different navigation uh, option uh, to these notebooks. Uh, but the important thing is if you look at the activity bar, you can see that the note notebooks is what is highlighted. So you're, you have the notebook view. If you create a notebook and you don't provide the navigation, you, you don't, I don't think you'll see it here, but you'll see it in the Explorer. And the Explorer, I'll click on that in the activity bar, will actually provide all of the contents all of the files that are in this solution. Uh, the I, P, Y, N, B, these are all notebooks. So these are the same six, but you'll see there's actually uh, additional resources here. And that's where I get my images by putting in my resources folder, the images, and then I'll have a link, which is a lot, a lot like an HTML link, but easier, uh, a, a link uh, to that image um, so when, it re when you view the notebook, you can actually see all the, uh, those contents. Uh, one last thing, it's, it is hard to see the nesting just in the presentation. Uh, so what I'm going to do just to give you a better idea is I'm going to use this particular command. This is nothing more than a DOS or PowerShell tree command. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go down into Azure Data Studios terminal window. Nice thing about Azure Data Studio is you don't have to shell out, go to a command prompt. Everything is in this one um, application. I'll go ahead and paste that in and run. First, I'll make this window a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, so this is a little bit better view, the tree view, as compared to this rendering. Same contents. So all of the um, uh, notebooks, are listed here along with uh, that one markdown, all the, the JPEG, et cetera, your uh, YAML files for the, the table of contents. So it gives you a little bit better idea of how the solution is put together. Again, you don't need all the pieces. You can just create a notebook full stop and use it. But if you have several notebooks, you may find that it's helpful to tie them together with a table of contents. All right, so that's the introduction of, by the way, I, I am using, instead of PowerPoint, Azure Data Studio notebooks, uh, because it gives me uh, really the ability not only to show you what I'm doing, but have code samples embedded in these notebooks. Then we're gonna take these notebooks, um, put them up into GitHub and show you at the end of this, <coughs> excuse me, how to download uh, all of the, um, uh, everything that you're gonna see today. So you can actually use it on your own in, uh, uh, Azure Data Studio. All right, you can see you get a little bit of uh, extra nav down here. If in fact, when you stitch it together, you put this in the table of content. So it knows the next one is the, uh, this markdown cheat sheet. So again, the two primary cells, uh, one of them would be the, uh, the, the text, which is markdown, the other is the code. So you know what you can do within these markdown. Uh, there's, I've got a cheat sheet in here. So first the point is that uh, this uses the GitHub flavor of markdown. Now markdown is reasonably consistent across the board. A lot of different websites will use it. Uh, when you type something into say Slack, you could use markdown. Uh, but there are a few conflicts and where it does conflict, it would use the GitHub version uh, of Markdown. So Markdown is, is very simple to use, but it's also very powerful. We have a book on Azure Data Studio written totally in Markdown. In fact, here's the editor that, that I used. Uh, this is uh, the book, but I edited everything strictly in Markdown. So you can see I got a heading here. And then I've got my bold, uh, of course, have different chapters. And uh, so as, uh, it looks like, it, I mean, it's very simple to use, but it is very powerful. You can literally write a complete book uh, with, uh, with just Markdown. Oh, by the way, at the end of this uh, webinar, we'll show you how to get a free copy uh, of this book. 
All right, so let's take a quick look at Markdown. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit. This is a text cell. In the text cell, I've got Markdown. I, I'm going to use a split screen so I can see on the left the actual Markdown and then how it is rendered on the right side. So you can see heading one, that's just a single pound sign, space, followed by your heading, or two, two pound sign, space, followed by your heading. And you can see how that, uh, uh, the, the result of that. So much easier than HTML, where you have a begin tag, end tag, um, et cetera. Uh, another good example of is emphasis. I'm going to edit. This is another text cell. I'm going to split the screen. And so I can see um, for emphasis, I could use an asterisk on both sides of a word or phrase or underscores. And then I will get uh, the uh, emphasis uh, on that particular word uh, or phrase. Uh, one of the interesting things to note, if you go back many years, all word processors use this very same approach. These are codes. So you have you know, begin code, end code. Uh, later, a lot of most organizations switched to WYSIWYG, which sees what you get. We've actually gone now back <laughs> because of the flexibility and the power to actually embedding codes. So you could have a markdown editor that's truly WYSIWYG or a markdown editor uh, where you put in the codes. And again, most uh, uh, <clears throat> people are heading towards using these codes because they're really very simple. So a strong emphasis or a bold is just two asterisks or two underscores. You can combine them, asterisks and a single underscore, um, et cetera. Uh, for your lists, uh, lists are actually uh, you know, very, very flexible. I can have them ordered or unordered. Uh, you can have them indented to get sub list. Um, you don't have to strictly follow the numbering scheme. You could use one across the board and it will um, enumerate them properly. Or if, if you know, uh, oftentimes if you have a big list, you want to go and renumber everything. You don't have to worry about that. You just put a number, any number. The first one should start with one, but any number, and then it will number them in order. So you don't have to go back and, and fix that. Uh, you, you can get links. Uh, links are very helpful. We're going to use you know, quite a few links. The link starts with a square bracket, and then you put whatever text you want for the link in here, and then it followed by two uh, braces, and that's where your link goes. That's that's the full syntax. Uh, you know, very very easy to use. So here's a link to our our website. Instead of going through all of the markdown, uh, what I've done here is I put additional references. Now that we can do, use a link, why not go ahead and just link to uh, complete guides for this? So again, when you download this, you'll be able to follow these links. Here's an example of the GitHub guide. I'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, this will take us into uh, a nice uh, PDF um, guide. All of this is very much what you just saw a minute ago, but there are uh, GitHub flavored uh, uh, markdown syntax. And so you can get a, a better feel for uh, other options uh, uh, that you have. Okay, so that is half of a notebook, which is the text cell. Uh, very different, of course, if you're editing in uh, SQL Server Management Studio, you, of course you have these kind of comments, but Obviously, it's a whole new world using Markdown for your, for your comments. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to a SQL notebook. Uh, this uh, uh, SQL notebook um, uses the kernel SQL. Again, uh, you've got many kernels to choose from, uh, but you can only have one kernel per notebook. So that's why we'll have three to go through this example. We're gonna have a PowerShell notebook and a, and a Python uh, notebook. Okay, you can run these cell codes individually or all together. In either case, you have to establish a connection to your database, which you can do on the uh, toolbar, select your uh, connection. I'll go ahead and choose one locally here. Or had I not done that and I just, told it to, to run a single cell, it would prompt me for what connection to run it on and establish that uh, as the extension. Uh, just as an interesting note, 
what you cannot do is highlight a part of it and run. And so uh, if you do that, you're thinking, well, it's just going to run that segment, but no, it will run the entire cell. So be, be wary of, uh, of that. If you had a, a delete, a drop statement that you'd want to run and you say, well, I didn't highlight it, it doesn't matter. In a notebook, it will run the entire uh, cell. Uh, okay. And then um, the anything you declare any variables, they're scoped just to that cell. So I, for example, I've got two cells here. I can't define uh, 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 declare a variable here and then reference it in a subsequent cell. Not with SQL. You can do that with Python. Um, not sure about PowerShell, but uh, you are able to uh, define in one cell and then reference it in another, but not true in, in SQL. Not, not at this stage. All right. So let's go ahead and let's say I want to retrieve all the databases on the server. I'll go ahead and click on run. And now it will show me I have um, uh, some 20 odd databases. And this is just a standard uh, query of uh, the system tables returning the size. Now you would have a similar experience in Management Studio, but what's a, what if you wanted to graph this or create a chart from it? Well, I've got one button from here that I can click on and that will create a chart automatically for me. And it will do it within the same uh, results section. Now it's not configured perfectly. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and configure this chart. And I'm gonna say the first column I want as a row label. And so now you can see uh, that it uh, uses the first return column to give me the label of these columns, or I could simply hover on the actual bar to determine which database it was and, and how large uh, it, it is. So that's a, a, a very nice feature. If I wanted to share this, I can copy it as an image, email it out to a, a coworker. Um, I also <clears throat> could save the results set as, as a CSV Excel, uh, JSON, XML, um, et cetera. Or I could go back to the table and, uh, and view that. So very, very uh, flexible uh, reporting. Um, if I want to uh, export something, I'll, let's say I'll, I'll list uh, all the columns. And now again, I've got a, a, a table, but if I wanted to export that to say, um, you know, maybe Excel. I could click on um, the export. I could navigate. I could say, well, I want to put it on my desktop. And I'll put it in results. Save it. And it'll pop up down here. You want to open the file that you just saved. And so it'll open up Excel. And you can see all the contents from that query uh, that you just ran. Also in notebooks, you get take advantage of snippets. Uh, snippets are uh, code segments that are predefined, but available just with keywords and they can be parameterized. So let's say I want to write a cursor. Well, it's what about 10 or 12 uh, lines uh, just to have, just establish a cursor. Uh, they provide, uh, Microsoft does out of the box, um, a snippet for this. So I can just simply search type cursor. You can see the IntelliSense will pop up this snippet, which will give me the outline for my cursor. So I don't have to type all this in, but I've got you know, the bones of, of a cursor. And so, uh, and then notice it's highlighted. Um, these are parameters defined in the cursor and the same parameter appears in two locations. So if I want information schema, and let's say, oops. A and I will get the uh, tables. Okay, so you can see it changed it in two places, which is also handy. If I hit tab, it'll go to the next one. I actually don't want uh, a schema, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and set my cursor up. Now these are not valid uh, columns. I'm going to want the uh, table schema. And I'm going to want the uh, 
table name. Uh, and then finally, what I'll do is I'll print, uh, I'll go ahead and, and have it send schema into column name one and table into column name two. And then I'll display what that looks like. So I'm gonna print out column name one dot column name two. That's all I have to do, I can click run. And here's a list of, of all my tables. I can do whatever I want with those tables, of course, but uh, the bottom line is that the cursor editing experience for SQL is very rich. It has both IntelliSense as well as the additional snippets, which can, are customizable. You can write your own snippets and you can parameterize them. Uh, we have a couple of videos on that. We will show um, at the end uh, a link to all of our videos if you're interested in, in some of these uh, techniques. All right, so we got 10 minutes left. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. This is a PowerShell uh, notebook. So notice that the kernel is PowerShell. Uh, so the comments, these are, these are all the same. This is just exactly what uh, uh, you saw before with the markdown. That's, that's a, a link to uh, an image that's in the solution. And this is just the, uh, uh, the heading. And so what I'm gonna do is run this first code set. And this code set is gonna tell me a little bit about the version of PowerShell that is actually embedded into Azure Data Studio, just so you, you understand uh, if, you, if you're a PowerShell person, the version. So it's a 32-bit 5.1. What's interesting, if I pull uh, this out, and I run it in the terminal, because you can see I've also got PowerShell running in the terminal. Um, I've got a different uh, version. And in fact, this is a 64-bit uh, version. So just, just so that you're aware of the, the, the slight differences you could encounter. And so this is a 64-bit version that we integrated this PowerShell integration terminal window. Now you can change this. This is PowerShell core. You can select a different default shell. You can have the command prompt, uh, uh, et cetera. Uh, but just so you know, when you're running PowerShell here and PowerShell in the, the terminal window, it could in fact uh, be different. All right, now that I'm in PowerShell, I can do all kinds of stuff that I couldn't do in SQL Server. So let's say I wanted to back up my databases. So that's probably gonna put the backup file on the same server as the database. So best practices would be to, for disaster recovery, move that off. And so I can just go now into PowerShell and run a command and go from my source server to any place else on the network and uh, choose my uh, directory, my subdirectory and place that in. Uh, so that's the, the nice things about PowerShell. You would, uh, transcend the, the limits of your SQL Server, assuming it's configured with under best practices where your, your SQL Server is not reaching out into folders within your uh, system. Here's another uh, example. What, this is a, a PowerShell command that will run a query. And this is gonna run the, really pretty much the same query we saw a minute ago, out of pull out of information schema, all the tables within the database. Uh, I do have, because I'm in PowerShell, so I'm not connected to a database, but I can tell it to connect to an instance. And this is just local host, just a reference to my local machine. And then I'm going to pipe the results of that out to this uh, CSV table. And so we'll go ahead and run that, just one click. Now I think I'm going to have a problem. This is where I had mentioned there's a, an assembly that's not in the 32-bit. So if you see that, what you may have to do, and which, what I'll do right now is just take that same command and paste it down to my 64-bit version uh, and run that, and it's done. So I, I place the output into table CSV. If I go into my back to the view, the, the uh, file um, explorer view, you can see it's it's now updated. It's placed a new table. Uh, called table CSV. If I click on that, you can see it now PowerShell has pulled stuff out of the database and placed it directly into uh, this uh, CSV file for us. Okay, so let's go on to Python. How are we doing on time? All right. Um, 
let me run through this. I'll, I'll get to the, the questions. Uh, so for this, um, uh, you obviously you need the uh, the Python uh, kernel. Uh, the um, the Python kernel is configurable within Azure Data Studio. So if you run this and you want to change the platform or change the kernel, here's a link you can follow to do just that. Uh, but right now I'll see, well, what version am I running? So I'm, I'm running version 3.8, that's, that's good. Um, so I, I don't need to change that, but if you see an earlier version of this and you might, depending on your configuration, uh, you can see how to get the latest version. So now I can write Python. And so here's a very simple Python script. Uh, I'm setting three uh, or, or two variables and dividing it and showing the results. So there, there's Python running in, in the notebook, something a little meatier. Uh, let's say that I wanted to know where are all my JSON files on my system. Uh, Python's very good at that. I can run this and it'll start giving me the location of, of all of my, uh, my JSON files. Uh, it's gonna run for a while, so I'm gonna uh, cancel it. Uh, but uh, so now you've got access to uh, a notebook, Python, PowerShell, SQL Server, et cetera. Uh, if you want to clear the results, uh, you can click on this eraser button. And then that'll take us to our last one, uh, which is uh, next steps. Uh, you will receive an email uh, after this. And in the email, you're going to have the links, including where to download this particular um, uh, uh, solution. If I click on that, you can see it'll take you to uh, the, the very same place. And now, because I I had all the navigation with the YAML. I end up, I get the very same uh, uh, navigation that I had within Azure Data Studio on GitHub. So it's a real nice way to, to marry those two uh, together. So you'll get that you, you, where you can download it. If you want a free copy of our book, uh, just send an email to Connor and ask for a copy of our hands-on Azure Data Studio book. This also has a link to our YouTube uh, videos. We, we've done quite a few on Azure Data Studio. We do have our own ELT ETL products, Bimblesnap, ELT Snap. So you can also visit our website to find out more about that. So let's look at uh, questions. Uh, what version of Azure Data Studio are you running? It's the latest. Um, otherwise you would see a little icon, a little star or circle. But what you can also do is go to help uh, and release notes. And that'll take you to the uh, uh, release notes, which probably gives us the version. Um, hmm, let's see the version there. Maybe can I get to help? Oops, sorry. Help about version 1.24. So uh, if you. If you're, you don't have a note, so notebook options have been out for a while. I'm surprised you don't see that. But what I would do, it, it, you, you may see an option to update. Uh, if not here, uh, you could probably check for updates within the menu. Um, but it, the notebook feature has been out for uh, quite some time. So uh, uh, you should be able to, uh, but yeah, I would always update to the very, very latest version just because they have the, you know, more, more and more uh, features built into it. Uh, I just got back, is, is this being recorded? Yes, sir, it is being recorded and you'll get a link uh, to this um, webinar so you can watch it on demand. Uh, oh, okay, so Joe answered that, okay. All right, looks like that's all the questions. All right, well, I, I, hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this was our, basics. We do plan on doing some deep dives into notebooks. We think notebooks are the way of the future, uh, you know, certainly from anybody who works with a database, uh, whether it's from a development, analytics, uh, a data scientist, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The, you know, the power of notebooks is just so far beyond standard SQL editing windows, uh, plus multi-kernel, uh, plus open source, uh, plus multi-platform, uh, multi-databases. Uh, so it currently works on Postgres as well as uh, SQL, works on Linux. So definitely uh, Microsoft's way of the future. And so we'll, we'll be spending quite a bit of time here.
Thanks again for attending. See you next time.